Hi, I'm Judy Filarecki. Today I'd like to take a look at complementary colors. Using complementary colors can alter the color to make things darker, or make it more gray, or make it more brown. So we'll take a look at today of the effects of mixing reds and greens. Today we're going to take a look at um, reds and greens. Now they are complementary. If you look on your color wheel, you'll find that they are directly opposite each other. And with complementary colors, when you mix them, you end up with a gray. Depending on how you mix them, um, whether you use a whole lot of one color and less of the other, or vice versa, it'll give you all different shades of the color you're trying to accomplish. So let's first of all take a look at uh, the red and the green in about equal parts. Now this particular green happens to be kind of a bluish green. and. I don't particularly like the bluish green, so if I add some red to it, it will tone it down. Now, maybe I've put a little too much red in it, so let's add a little more green. And this is great, like when you're, when you're doing foliage um, and you want to have a dark um, underpainting and then bring the lighter colors forward. Now, I'm going to dab a little bit, of, a little bit of white so you can see. Now that's kind of a gray-green. If I added just a, a little bit more red to it, it might gray it up a little bit more. Okay, but that's definitely gray. If I add a little more white to it so you can see it better. There, you can see now that that's, that's a gray, but it's a gray-green. And actually, whenever you mix any two colors that are complementary, you will end up with some form of a gray. If you take a look at this one, you could see how that would really work really well um, in um, a background green, uh, where then you could highlight it with other colors to bring the colors forward and give the appearance of foliage. All right, so that's what it looks like when you mix red and green. Now, that's a blue-green. Now, when I'm doing landscapes, I like to use a, a sap green. So this is a sap green over here. I'll just bring it out a little bit. A little more yellow in it. Can you see the difference from the blue green to the yellow green? Now, if I mix that with the red, let's see what happens. Now it's giving me a little bit more of a, a brownish gray. OK. But that, again, you want to use that effect for when you're doing uh, landscapes to create the different shades of green that you want from the back to the forward. I'm going to add a little bit of white to that so you can see the difference in the gray. All right, now that didn't come out quite gray. It's, still, it's very, very green still. So let's add a little bit more red to it. Oh, too much. <laughs> but that's okay. We'll just add some more. Now, you know what the problem is? These are not directly across from each other on, on the um, color wheel because this has a lot of yellow in it, so it doesn't gray it up as much. Kind of almost gives it a little more of a brown tinge. So I know I'm not going to get it if I add white to it. I know I'm not going to get a full gray like I did with the other. Getting kind of a grayed down yellow. All right, see the difference? This one supposedly is just green, but it tends to be a little bit bluish. This one is definitely a sap green that has yellow in it. And so you can see the difference in what the colors uh, produced from it. So when you're talking about looking for a strictly a gray, you want to be absolutely sure that you're mixing colors that are totally complementary to each other. You don't want to be doing a yellow green with a red like we did here. Otherwise, you end up with a little more of a brownish, yellowish, kind of dull down color. 